Morning, everyone. Uh, lovely to have an opportunity to talk to you. I considered, uh, what am I going to pitch here? I haven't got anything to sell. So uh, I'm going to give you some advice uh, instead. Uh, back in 2021, Redflow made a strategic decision to go after larger scale installations. So uh, we did a two megawatt hour installation in California. Um, I'm very pleased to say in the last couple of months, we've had uh, support from the Queensland government for four megawatt hours. It's extremely welcome. Uh, our first big battery uh, domestically here in Australia. Um, uh, about the same time, we were granted a 20 megawatt hour in California again, and only in, and then another four megawatt hours, no, two megawatt hours on the east coast of the US, and then only in the last couple of days, 35 megawatt hours in the US. So we've maxed out our, our factory uh, in Thailand uh, with that now, and we really seriously have to consider where we're going to put the next one. Um, and it would be nice, wouldn't it? <laughs> if we could justify putting it in Queensland. Um, we've heard about the IRA. Uh, we're under a lot of pressure to uh, succumb to that. Uh, obviously, a lot of our market is in the USA. Um, as I said, our factory's in Thailand at the moment, so uh, we always struggled with the cost of labour. And I think uh, the last speaker talked about um, uh, the market is it the uh, electric car you want to pay for or the one you want to feel good about? It's always the price. Uh, so if uh, we made our batteries here in Queensland, I don't think the Queensland government would want to buy them because they'd be too expensive. That's a, a difficult equation for us to, to navigate, of course. Um, so uh, some, some of the advice, uh, uh, friendly advice. Uh, the first thing I'd say is that all of you Johnny-come-latelys who uh, gotten into the battery business, uh, now because it's sexy, Redflow's been in it for 15 years. And just as a little example, I started off my career in the 1980s uh, at the uh, university mine, actually, and was you know, supported by the coal mining industry at the time. Uh, now, later in my career, it's the renewable energy that's uh, keeping me in good clothes. <laughs> um, so uh, that, that's important to, to know, that, that longevity, because so often we see uh, on the media uh, someone with a beaker and a different coloured liquid in it uh, saying they've got the latest battery. And, and so that uh, gestation period from the concept and to the implementation really does not just take two years, it's, it's 10 and 20 years. Um, and, and we like to say that we wear our grey hair with pride uh, for all the experience that we've generated over those years. We must have done everything wrong several times, but eventually we've learned our lesson. Um, and, and along with that, uh, I say that, you know, you make a new battery and, and resolving the infant mortality is, is pretty straightforward. It's, it's actually the midlife crises that you have to uh, deal with. Uh, in batteries and they come back to bite you, you know, you think you made a perfect battery and sent it out and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm amused so often looking at the research, seeing someone's tested something for a hundred cycles and say, it's good. Um, uh, so th there's a bit of a tension there also uh, with the uh, investment. Um, what's the biggest challenge? The tension between investors wanting returns quickly and the innovators saying, well, we're almost there, you know, uh, we, we'll go to market. And unfortunately, that's, that's the way of the world. You know, if, if a battery maker didn't actually go out there and actually try and use them, uh, knowing that they aren't a perfect battery, and I don't know anyone who hasn't been disappointed by a battery being flat when it, <laughs> when it was unexpected or died. So... Um, uh, that, that tension between the, um, uh, the investors and the R&D folk particularly. And, and there's another sentiment I have there about the, the ecosystem. And that is the, the tension with IP. You know, uh, I was visiting uh, GMG the other day, uh, hoping to gain some of their wonderful um, uh, graphene, which I'm sure would be very good for our battery. Um, 
but that's a, a, a small example of, of where we both want to protect our, our interests, but we both want to gain from collaboration. So finding an easy way to solve those issues, uh, I think, is an important thing in this ecosystem uh, concept. Um, you know, we've trained quite a few engineers and technicians uh, spreading out in the industry uh, these days. is a good thing. Um, uh, one of our founders actually went on to start off the, um, um, uh, the Red Earth uh, business and doing very nicely there. Um, and another thing, we don't have that poster here. We've got a poster outside that uh, explains some of these concepts, but Having, having just made a battery, our challenge then was to demonstrate it to people that it as does actually work out in the field. And a battery by itself, well, you've got to know how to connect up a solar panel and inverters, and then you've got to put them in enclosures, and they've got to be UL compliant, and uh, uh, so many things beyond just the battery uh, is important. Um, Yeah, and I think the, the final thing I was going to say on the financing, I, I hark back to those early days when I was uh, in the mining industry. That was around the time when Paul Keating, love him or hate him, invented the 125% tax concession. And that was the golden era of R&D in Australia. And I think it needs to come back again. You know, if, if we had unemployed or too many uh, graduates or whatever, what they should be doing is the R&D component and they should be, you know, celebrated for that. And with that, I'll let the next chap take the floor. Thank you.